Welcome back. Today we're going to get started with Single Store and Java. Now this sample repo is great at being able to get started easily with Single Store using Java. It's just a quick three-step process. First, we'll sign up for a free license. This is free. Next, we'll start a cluster either in the cloud, in virtual machines, or in containers. In the sample, we have a Docker Compose file that allows us to spin up the cluster really easily. And third, we'll adjust the connection details and start our app. First, let's sign up for a free license. We'll come here and fill in our details. We'll submit the form, click on the link in the email, and we'll end up here in our customer portal. Here's our license key. I've clicked on software licenses, and I can now see the license key that I have provided for free. Next, let's spin up a cluster. Here in this sample, we have a Docker Compose file that allows us to get started really, really easily. Here in this Docker Compose file, we need only set our license key in place right here or on the console and it'll pick it up automatically. Here's my Docker Compose database already started up and it's ready to go. Step one done. Step two done. Next, let's adjust the connection details in app.java. We can compare this to the Docker Compose file where we've set our root password and our username is root. We'll come into app.java and we'll set our host name. In this case, we're using a local database. Our port is 3306, username is root. Our password set to match the Docker Compose file right here. And we're ready to go. The Acme database is also created automatically when we run the Docker Compose file. This init.sql file gets run automatically. Now this app is going to do all of the normal create, read, update, and delete functions. And so let's run this app and see how it works. I've already built my app, so let's run it. It inserted a row, it read a row, it updated a row, it read all the rows, it deleted a row. Let's take a look at the code and see how this is done. We're going to start off forming our connection string, our JDBC connection string, given the port, host, user, and password. We'll open a database connection. And once we've got our database connection, we will create a row, read one row, update that row, read all the rows, outputting all of the rows to the console, and finally delete a row. Let's take a look at each one. We'll start by creating a new row. Let's insert into messages. Here's that content that we passed into place. And we'll pass in that question mark. That avoids SQL injection because it uses a parameterized query. We're going to return the generated key, and we'll use that to know which row we created. So let's set that string, execute that update, and finally get the primary key that we returned back to our code. So we've created a row. Now let's go read that row. We pass in our ID. We select. Here's that question mark again, avoiding SQL injection. We'll execute that query and return the row that is created. We'll output that row to the console. And then next, we'll go read all. Select star from messages, order by ID. Now in the previous one, we selected specific columns. And in this case, we did a select star. Both work great in single star. So now we'll go loop through all of the things, collecting all of those messages, and return all of those messages back to the caller. Next up, update. We'll pass in the ID and the content that we want to update. So let's create that update statement. Update messages, set content equals question mark, where ID equals question mark. Let's set those two parameters and update the row. Finally, we'll delete. Delete from messages where ID equals that parameter, and we'll run that. So from the top, create a row, get the primary key, then we'll read that row, grabbing that message, and outputting that message. We'll update that row, so no longer does it say inserted row, it now says updated row. And then we'll go read all the rows, the one that we created, and the original row that the database created for us. Finally, we'll go delete that row. Let's run this application again and take a look at it. We inserted row ID 3. We read that row ID 3. Here's that row created today. We'll update that row. 
Then we'll read all rows. We can see that there's our initial row that init.sql gave us and the updated row. Finally, we'll delete that row. This GitHub repo is great for getting started with Java. You can do all of the create, read, update, and delete statements really easily. Once you've got a hang of this, putting in the content for your application should be no big deal at all. Thanks for watching.